so hello students let us continue our uh, sessions online course solve okay so till now we have discussed different types of problems from electric charges and fields right uh, the quest number of questions are somewhat like uh, 30 plus whatever so we have discussed so far and uh, if you find different types of question you can send me or we can discuss those right now moving ahead uh, let us look into the next chapter electrostatic potential and capacitance now um, whenever i say uh, there is force acting between two bodies there and all we can actually expect electro we can actually expect the potential energy uh, to be stored in in this in, in the system of those two bodies between which the force exist uh, one simple way is me and the earth uh, i mean my body and the earth are exchanging a force gravitational force right earth is pulling me down with certain force so gravitational force exists between me and the earth now that is the reason why the concept of gravitational potential energy came right so how close i am to the earth decides what is the amount of potential energy between me and the earth right so those things we have all discussed in the uh, in the gravitational potential energy chapter of uh, last year 11th and now similarly in the first chapter of electrostatics okay electric charges and fields uh, we got to know that there exists a charge between i'm sorry there exists a force between two charged bodies right there exists a force between two charged bodies what kind of force fine if they are uh, like charges the force is repulsive if they are unlike charges the force is attractive anyhow we have a force acting between two bodies so where and all we have force there and all we can have potential energy so the the same concept applied to the pair of charge we can see that there exists potential energy stored between two charged bodies kept at considerably uh, measurable distance following so when we keep two charged bodies separated by certain distance or close to each other we can uh, obviously expect some potential energy stored in the system so how to visualize this uh, let me demonstrate of uh, since we cannot have or uh, i cannot uh, give you the proper demonstration of electric charges itself i i should i could have bought uh, brought two charged bodies close to each other like charges left one of that would move and uh, cause the damage or whatever the work we needed to do but uh, uh, i i have a pair of magnets so my magnets are somewhat close to that of the charges but here uh, in magnets we always have both both the poles north and south pole together that's fine we can demonstrate what whatever we are going to discuss now uh, using uh, the analogy of magnets so let me go for the demonstration once and then we'll come back for the discussion right so now what we have here is a pair of magnets um see this mark shows it's of one particular pole not sure which pole is it uh, it is let me check afterwards for now this is one kind of pole this is the other kind of one okay now you see that both has that white mark white dot has are like poles right they are the similar poles either both north or both south just just similar to that of uh, like charges right both positive or both negative now uh, so here we have a piece of chalk uh, in order to just make this piece of chalk fall down i need to do some work right the work may be very little yeah it is very little work but without that work 
this piece of chalk will not fall by itself right. So, I need to do certain work to make this piece of chuck fall. Now, there are two ways of doing the work. One, uh, use your mechanical energy in, in the body and do the work. The other, you can store the energy in the form of potential energy and then utilize that potential energy in order to do the work required. Now, see this is north, assume this is north, okay. So, this will also be north. What they do when they try to come close, they repel each other, right. So, they repel. Now, I can make use of this property of repulsion in order to store energy, right. Now, look. So, this is one magnet and this is the other. What I am doing is, I am just storing energy now, okay. Okay. So, now see, I am doing some mechanical work in order to bring one of the magnet close to the other one, right. Now, I have stored some potential energy in the system of these two magnets, right. Following? Now, the proof that I have stored the potential energy can only be obtained if this stored potential energy can do some external work like making this jack piece fall down. So, yeah, it requires very less amount of energy, very less amount of work to be done in order to make this uh, piece of chuck fall, but it does require energy, it does require work to be done, very less, but has to be done. Now, we have a combination of two magnets, uh, which will show how the potential energy is stored. Now, I am saying you that, okay, now there is potential energy stored in the system. Now, let me uh, show you what that potential energy can do. If that potential energy can do the external work, then we can analyze, we, uh, we can convince ourselves, yes, there was potential energy and that potential energy made this chat piece fall. Now, see, saw that? I just left it, okay. <laughs> Believe me, I am not pushed it, I just uh, uh, raised my finger and it, it went away by itself and made the chat piece fall. You can do it in your home. That is that's easy, ok. Now, let me uh, show you the other way. You might have seen thought that ok, sir might have pulled it like this, no. So, uh, once again 3, 2, 1, potential energy converting into work, got it. So, now I hope uh, you have convinced that we can actually store potential energy when we have two forces acting, there the forces were magnetic in nature. Now, similarly, when you have a positive charge, okay, not necessarily positive itself, I am just taking as an example, you can relate whatever I am telling now to the negative charge also, okay, keep that in mind. Now, assume that I have a positive charge which is fixed, okay, which is not moving, firmly fixed to a support. And then I bring one more positive charge from certain distance close to this first positive charge, say this much close, okay. So, this is what I have done, fixed one, I obviously there will be a repulsion and the force of repulsion increases as I move close to this fixed charge, right. So, this is how I should force myself to bring this positive charge to this position. Now, uh, if I can bring it much closer, okay, so say this much and if I leave this charge from my hand, this charge will be somewhat like shooting in this direction, okay, just leave this. So, that force of repulsion will make the charge move in this direction with considerably good velocity, right. So, why is this charge moving? 
or i can say okay if i keep something uh, in the path of this moving charge okay i i brought this close to this charge and left so now it is moving so this part came in front of this moving charge okay some body came this moving charge hit that body and the body falls down so that is an external work and this external work can only be performed if there was potential energy stored in the system so that convinces us that there was potential energy in the system and that potential energy is using for the is used for the uh, work that the charge is doing following good now uh, we we have seen the example of uh, Uh, magnets but i will i also want to give you one more example uh, of for the potential energy storing phenomena assume that you have a spring okay so say this is the relaxed state of the spring okay uh, a spring uh, with say a normal ball okay a plastic ball on the other end of the spring and one end of it is fixed now look at these two arrangements they are somewhat similar to each other right so there was no much repulsion there will be repulsion between these two charges uh, as long as the charges move infinitely uh, away from each other but let us say the, the, the force of repulsion is very less now and now i have started moving this charge close to this that takes effort and the force keeps on increasing as i try to move it closer and closer and closer which is similar to that of the spring this is the relaxed state of the spring and i try to push the spring like this 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 the spring actually applies more force more and more force more and more force as in i as in when i try to compress it more and more and more now similar to these two say this ball or this end of the spring and this positive charge both pushed in this direction these ends are fixed so they came like this once you leave the hand both of them can be shot in direction in this direction right following so that is how we converted potential energy into work external work right so if you want external work you you need to have potential energy stored in the system so that convinces us that definitely there will be potential energy stored in a pair of charge following right so now let us look into the amount of potential energy stored whenever we have a pair of positive charges so the same method is adopted here which is the same method uh, the method using which we actually derived the potential energy formula for gravitational potential energy spring potential energy or elastic potential energy so which we discussed in the last year 11th right you need to remember that uh, work power energy there we derived various potential energy formula kinetic potential all those things within potential gravitational potential and elastic potential energy all those formula and uh, i was happy by the end of the uh, uh, chapter you were able to derive formula by yourself like uh, you did uh, many of you derived the formula of uh, elastic potential energy by yourself and, and you can do it uh, even now once you refer it back now same analogy same method is applied to find the potential energy stored between two charges okay so let me derive the formula for potential energy stored in a pair of charge okay so say i have a positive charge fixed say capital q okay fixed now assume that i am bringing 
uh, another positive charge small q from certain distance okay from say from here to here okay from here to here so this is the old position i want them in a single line this is the new position i have brought this charge from here to here the charge minus uh, small q from this position to this position now uh, see uh, when it comes to the relaxed state of a spring it was just relaxed when there was no compression no elongation which means whenever there is no uh, elastic force acting we say that the spring is relaxed or whenever there is no spring force we say the spring is relaxed but when is the pair of these two charge the system as a system is relaxed the pair of these two charges as a system is relaxed only when this charge q is at infinity following because relax means what there should be no force acting between those two or uh, in the system okay spring as a system is relaxed when there is no compression or refraction um, or elongation here these two charges as a system are relaxed only when this charge q is at infinity right so at infinity it is relaxed i am doing certain work from uh, to bring the charge small q from here to here okay keep this things in mind now uh, let me say uh, this charge q small q was at a distance of x from this capital charge uh, charge capital q and is brought dx meters close to this capital q okay only this much a small displacement is happening again why the small displacement are we considering because the force here is not a constant force it's a variable one right see uh, which means the force experienced by this charge small q at this position is bit lesser than the force experienced by the same charge at this point so that is why and as as this small charge gets closer and closer to this positive charge q the force experienced by this becomes more and more and more so the force is variable here not a constant one so in order to get the work done during this shift okay or the entire shift we need uh, we, we did it for the entire shift from infinity to this point but just as of the small displacement is concerned we are going to consider this small displacement in such a way that there is no increase or decrease of force in this shift or in this displacement that is why we are considering very small displacement following since the force is variable here we are considering a very small displacement such that during this displacement the force is not varying okay that is why very small displacement here now finally the distance between capital q and small q this distance let that be r okay now the work done remember the work done in bringing the charge from position a okay let this be position a to position b following the work done in bringing the charge from position a to position b will be it will be a very small amount of work right because it's a small displacement of dx so obviously it's a very small amount of work that i need to do so dwo is the amount of work i do in order to bring the body from a to b so what is w work done w is equal to force into displacement that's simply in scalar form but both force and displacement are vectors that makes f dot dx where f is the force which is not varying during this small transition the electrostatic force here and dx is the small displacement that we are doing the dark product of those two gives us the small work dw why are we going for work basically i hope you are 
uh, good with this concept we have actually discussed with uh, uh, discussed this previously we are going for work done formula because the amount of work we do in order to bring this charge from infinity to this point itself is the potential energy stored in the system following so whatever the work we do on the system will be stored in the system in the form of potential energy okay as just assume spring uh, the to what extent you compress the spring decides the amount of potential energy you store in the spring you compress less you, you store less potential energy you compress more you store more potential energy you leave it you get more work again following so the amount of work i do decides the amount of potential energy stored so that is why i am bothered about the amount of work i am doing on the system now so this is the small amount of work i did in order to bring the charge from position a to position b now uh, the potential energy of the system now this is the system okay that is the system we are bothered about and we need to get the potential energy of the system so this is the small amount of work before we uh, move further uh, as of the uh, deduction is concerned from vector to scalar form this is going to be f dx cos theta what is cos theta what is this theta theta is the angle between f and dx look at this situation what is the see this is fixed one no need to worry about this this is the charge we are concerned about because we are doing the work on this charge okay keep that in mind what is the direction of electrostatic force on charge a it is like this right both are positive positive it's rippling this is the direction of force on charge a right and what is the direction of displacement happening with that charge the displacement that is happening with the charge is in this direction like this right so this is the direction of dx look at them they are exactly opposite to each other so theta is 180 degree farad when theta becomes 180 so dw then becomes minus f dx okay because cos 180 is minus 1 right now these are the magnitudes of the force of acting now in order to get the uh, so let me write to better uh, this is the work done uh on the charge on small q of uh, for moving it from a to b okay from a to b small amount of work we did from what now the net work done or the total work done on q for bringing it okay bringing it from infinity to r or i can say to the position b okay why i am considering infinity because the system is only relaxed when there is no electrostatic force acting between them and the electrostatic force will only be zero if the displacement is infinity between them right f is equal to 1 by 4 peps not q1 q2 by r squared by r squared q1 is not becoming zero q2 is not become zero so r can become infinity and only and then only you can get, you can get the force as zero now you have dw is equal to minus f dx which is small work done the net work done or the total work done in order to bring the charge from infinity to that point shall only be obtained by integrating them right so integral of dw is equal to minus integral of f dx now look at this what is this uh, f integral of f dx this is the uh, total work we done we, we should do now uh, dx is the variable here which is varying yeah obviously force is also varying but as of the limits are concerned we need to okay you will get to know these things better when you study Uh, integration in the coming classes of math but for now you, you consider this much uh, now i need to apply the limits okay limits from infinity to r from where the body 
is coming from the body or the charge small q is coming from infinity to what position to the position b right and what is that uh, distance between the actual charge the fixed charge and the position b it is r right so from infinity to r from infinity to r because this is the system this is the new system this is the system in which the potential energy has to be found and this is in this system the distance of separation is r and in order to form this distance this charge b has to be brought from infinity right now that makes the uh, limits to be applied from infinity to r and here in the lhs it's very simple integral of dw is simply w which is the total work done okay is equal to so if that okay integral of dw which is w is equal to minus integral of infinity to r what is f we all know that the force between two charged bodies is f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square what is q1 here capital q what is q2 here it is small q divided by r square is considered when the distance of separation is r but here the distance of separation is not fixed because this is the final distance of separation from uh, where the system ends its formation but before the system came to this formation before the small charge came to this position it had different varying distance of separations see here it had x some other x x x x, x. so different distance of separations which all all of them uh, has to be considered uh, using a variable okay x squared okay instead of r i am considering x here because i have taken the final displacement as r and before it come the system came to the final distance of separation r it had a varying or changing displacements right displacement was infinity and then the displacement started to decrease infinity to some thousands of kilometers and then few kilometers then few meters few uh, centimeters and it has come and rest this point so all those thousands of kilometers infinity to thousands of kilometers to kilometers to meters they're all variables x okay i have taken them as a variable x so now q q by x square into dx now okay following See, once you study integration you will have clearest picture uh, till then you need to believe me that uh, this is how we do uh, integration in order to get the total work done okay right now which is equal to uh, see similar okay it's even you have not studied uh, differentiation that's fine see whatever is there inside the integration among that uh, you can actually take out all the constant factors outside which and all are the constant factors inside this 1 by 4 by epsilon naught it's a pure constant right q q uh, in this motion of charge from infinity to b the value of charge capital q and small q are not varying they are fixed right in this motion in this particular case so they are also constants i can take them outside what is left uh, so after taking them outside it is capital q small q by x squared integral of infinity to r it's simply 1 by x squared dx left inside the integration now uh, you can google for the formula of 1 by x squared dx integral of 1 by x squared dx it's easy it's a direct formula which is minus q q by x squared integral of 1 by x squared is minus 1 by x okay you need to memorize those formula there is a general formula uh, anyhow you will get to know for this derivation you take it as a uh, word from me integral of 1 by x squared is minus 1 by x okay so after integrating it minus 1 by x squared is i'm um, sorry 1 by x squared integral of 1 by x squared is minus 1 by x 
what are the limits limits are from infinity to r so lower limit is infinity upper limit is r okay now let me apply the limits so how do we apply the limits wherever you have okay just a minute it's not uh, x square x square is not a constant it's 4 pi epsilon not q q by 4 pi epsilon not simple q q by 4 pi epsilon not now q q by x came out what is left inside the bracket q q by 4 pi epsilon not came out and what is left inside is minus 1 by x now you need while applying the limits you replace the value of x the variable by the upper limit first and then by the lower limit as follows upper limit first which is minus 1 by in place of x we put r okay minus of okay minus 1 by the lower limit in place of the variable which is infinity now which is equal to minus q q by 4 pi epsilon naught into okay anyhow 1 by infinity is 0 so this part vanishes what is left inside this big bracket is square bracket is minus 1 by r minus into minus plus okay i will apply that in the next step so it is 1 by minus 1 by r left so the total work i need to do uh, in order to bring this charge small q from infinity to this point okay the total work is this much w is equal to uh, let me bring it put it in a regular way like uh, see minus into minus plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught i'll write it first this is how we actually wrote the formula of force and field that's why i'm writing 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught first and then we have q q by r simply r you can look at the formula it's it seems to be familiar to you right 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q or q1 q2 by r squared what is that r then back then it was distance of separation even now r is the distance of separation the only difference here is in place of r squared you have r right and this is the total amount of work i have done in bringing the charge from infinity to this point so this itself is the potential energy stored in this system following so since i have done this much of work in bringing the charge from infinity to this point the amount of work i have done now itself is the total potential energy stored in the system which i can write as u regular expression or symbol for potential energy u is equal to okay because amount of work i have done will be stored in the form of potential energy in the system which is u is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q q by r great so this is the expression for potential energy stored in a system of two charges only two charges now uh, every time i won't be having a charge to bring it from infinity to this point so as similar to that of we made the transition uh, from force to field okay you should remember what i have taught you see uh, when whenever you have two charges they obviously experience some electrostatic force uh, if they are like repulsive now i don't need to have the second charge always so i remove this second charge even then i need some scaling okay if i bring some charge into this position that that would experience some this much of force so how did we do go for that we actually went for field in order to visualize the effect of this charge in its region in, in the in this region surrounding it uh, when a new charge or a test charge is brought closer to that right so in order to have a physical experience you need to have two charges that is force now you remove this second charge you have only one charge even then you can plot some uh, effect theoretically that itself is field okay force to field what we did we actually made this second charge as plus one coulomb theoretical okay no need to put a charge plus one assume plus one coulomb at this position 
write the force assume the same 1 coulomb uh, plus 1 coulomb at this position write the force that itself is field field new fields similarly here electrostatic potential energy uh, is the uh, is as follows u is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q by q q by r square but if the second charge small q is made equal to plus 1 coulomb then we get uh, a new term which is called electrostatic potential okay and this is similar to that of what we have studied in the last year also there also we had the concept of potential energy if you remember u is equal to as the same as of uh, force formula g m1 m2 by r square then electrostatic potential uh, that is force electrostatic uh, sorry gravitational force is f is equal to uh, g m1 m2 by r square gravitational potential energy between those two bodies is u is equal to g m1 m2 by r minus g it is actually minus g m1 m2 by r right that is gravitational potential energy due to those two charges and those two bodies now then you come across gravitational potential in order to get gravitational potential what you did uh, you actually made the second mass equal to 1 kg you made m2 equal to 1 kg remember that so as soon as you made uh, make the uh, second mass m2 equal to 1 kg you end up with an equation v is equal to minus g m by r which is gravitational potential similarly here when we make small q is equal to plus 1 coulomb Okay, small q is equal to plus 1 coulomb, we get something called potential. What kind of potential? Electrostatic potential, right? Electrostatic potential V is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q is plus 1. What is left is capital Q by R. So, this is the expression for electrostatic potential. Now, uh, okay, before we go further, let me define this V, okay. So, from all these things, we are going to uh, define V now, okay. Uh, I need to write the expression. So, right, now let me define V, let me define electrostatic potential. What is this electrostatic potential? Whatever we have done so far is all taken together and defined that itself is electrostatic potential. Now, electrostatic potential is the amount of work done. Okay. So, it is amount of work done right. We are doing some work that itself is V later it became V. So, amount of work done on what? On uh, on what we are actually doing the work, the amount of work done on a unit positive charge, unit positive charge, right? We are actually doing the work on unit positive charge, the amount of work done on a unit positive charge, right? Small q is equal to plus 1 coulomb. In order to bring it from right why are we doing the work we are trying to bring it from infinity to a point right we are actually doing the work on this charge in order to bring it from infinity to that point during the derivation we have discussed it so the amount of work done on a unit positive charge in order to bring it from infinity to a point is called okay that itself is see the work done then become potential energy then itself is potential so from infinity to a point is called electrostatic potential electrostatic potential at that point right so 
this electrostatic potential V is valid at this point. Now, if R changes, if you have new position, then you have a new potential energy or new electrostatic potential at that point. Following? So, that is it, uh, amount of work done on a unit positive charge in order to bring it from infinity to infinity to, to a point is called electrostatic potential energy at that point. Following? So, you might be asking, sir, this capital Q does not come anywhere in the uh, definition, no need to worry. Even though there is no charge, if we assume there is no charge, then I, I should bring this from infinity to this point, I, I, I need to do in, I, I do not I don't need to do, do any work, right, because W becomes 0, work itself will be, become 0 because F is 0, no charge no repulsion, I do not need to do any work. So, the charge itself will come from infinity to this point. And yeah, it requires a small push, that small push is enough to bring it from infinity to this point. Now, what it means? I have done no work in bringing the charge from infinity to this point, which means that the potential at this point is 0. Following? The potential at this point is 0, because there is no charge around it. Around it. So, that makes sense and that is this is the definition of electrostatic potential. We represent electrostatic potential using the symbol capital V. Now, uh, let us look into the factors what kind of uh, quantity it is and the unit and all. So, this electrostatic potential V is a scalar quantity. Okay, it has got no direction. You all know this because work is work is scalar, and work itself is potential energy. Energy is also scalar. U is also scalar. When U is scalar, this is just another special case of U. Nothing else. So this has to be scalar, right? So this V is a scalar quantity. And coming to the SI unit of this electrostatic potential, uh, the electro Static potential has the SI unit given by volt, okay, VO LT volt, which is again represented by the same capital V, okay. Now, uh, the dimension of V, dimension of electrostatic potential, do it. Uh, so, Look at this, look at the look into the formula of V and E that will give you the idea. Yeah, let me leave that to you or I can give you the hint. See, potential is potential energy by charge, right? That is what we did. We made small q equal to plus 1 coulomb. Either you make small q is equal to plus 1 coulomb or you divide small q or divide u by small q, both are one and the same, right? So, it is numerically V is equal to U by Q. Make use of this and get the dimension of U, uh, dimension of V. This is energy, energy dimension comes that you need to do apply. I will not be going into it. Okay. I so, will give you the dimension of Q. Okay. Q is equal to I T current into time. Current it is A ampere for time T. Use this and get me the dimension of V. And when you refer to the book that I have given, the study material, such lunches, there you will find it, uh, the derivation is bit different from what I did now. Now, it is not that different, it is only one consideration uh, where it is different. Uh, in the book, they have, they have defined electrostatic potential first and then they have come for the derivation part, uh, assuming small q as plus 1 coulomb in the primary stage itself, in the beginning itself. But here, since I wanted to convince you uh, how the potential energy and potentials are all actually related to electrostatic force and we can obtain the analogy from gravitational force and gravitational potential energy, I followed this way. Both of them are fine, both of them are right. You can write any of these two in the examination, you will get full mark, right? Yeah, even if you refer to the one answer in the book, it is uh, it's actually the procedure and all is same. 
it's just that they have we have considered small q is equal to plus 1 coulomb at the end they will be con they have considered small q is equal to plus 1 coulomb in the beginning itself right just go through that you will get it right so we'll discuss more on the electrostatic potential in the next class thank you